In learning about animals, I had this vaguely defined theory that the animals of a given region tend to share traits. The big animals of sub-Saharan Africa, or the drab colors of most Australian animals. There are lots of exceptions, and these rules aren't universal by any means, but it feels like you can look at an unknown animal and have a pretty good guess of what continent it's from. Anyway, I just learned that someone else made a much better theory that explains everything in my theory and much more. So let's learn about the eight realms of Earth, the biogeographical realms. Biogeographical realms are separated from the rest of the world by some kind of barrier, like oceans or a mountain range. This has made eight relatively isolated realms on Earth. The realms are gigantic, spanning entire continents. But they are an interesting division of the world because they are big enough that entire evolutionary branches are still unique to that area. Here are the eight realms of Earth. Nearctic region, North America. The Nearctic has adopted some animals from other realms thanks to the former land bridge to Asia across the Bering Strait and the current land bridge with South America. Examples of adopted animals are iconic species like the grizzly bear, previously known as the brown bear, and the American bison, previously known as the Eurasian bison. But the Nearctic has developed its own roster of famous adoptees, including dogs, camels, and horses. Neotropical Region South America Unique birds! This realm has 31 endemic families of birds, then add more endemic groups of fish than any other realm. It's also the origin for potatoes, tomatoes, cotton, maize, and cocoa. Our grocery stores would be very different without the species from this realm. Also, our supply of food would be different without the conversion of this realm into farmland, but that is a story for another day. Palearctic Region, north of the Sahara Desert and the Himalayan Mountains We associate big mammals with the plains of Africa, but there used to be a lot of big mammals across Asia and Europe. European lion, woolly mammoth, Irish elk, cave bear. They all went extinct due to a combination of hunting and climate change, showing how all species in a region are linked. Afrotropical, region, south of the Sahara Desert. Big mammals! Also a large number of endemic animal groups. Ostriches, gorillas, lemurs, and many more. The southern part of Africa has at least 20 endemic plant families. The realm is also the native home of one species that has adapted to living in every other realm. Us. Indomalayan. Region, south of the Himalayan mountains, plus the Pacific islands closest to Asia. This realm's unique animals seem to all be associated with trees, Kalugos, Tarsiers, and Gibbons. There are 800 endemic species of amphibians in this realm, and pheasants have their highest diversity here. Australasian Region, Australia and New Zealand. Australia has marsupials, also the two egg-laying mammals. 80% of Australia's mammals are not found anywhere else in the world and 90% of fish, insects, and amphibians are also endemic. New Zealand, not to be outdone, has 70% endemic birds and 80% endemic plants, specifically conifers, angiosperms, and ferns. Oceanian Region, the Pacific Islands further east than the Indomalayan and Australasian realms. A vast collection of islands that are relatively new having arisen from volcanoes and coral reefs. The species here spread out from the mainland, but quickly diversified to fill the niches on these islands. There are many endemic species here, especially on Hawaii, and each of them has a very limited range. Antarctic Region Antarctica 
formerly a tropical island turned gigantic ice sheet up to almost three miles thick, Antarctica does not offer an easy environment for living things. The endemic species of Antarctica are in the water. Penguins, ocean invertebrates, and fish. We are just starting to discover that there are uniquely isolated pockets of fresh water in the ice, and who knows what we'll discover there. Going back to my original theory, we now have an explanation of why animals in a region kind of feel similar. The reason it feels like they share traits is because they evolved in the same place, with the same constellation of species and climate patterns, and in relative isolation from the rest of the world. They dealt with the same types of predators, the same availability of food and water, and they had immigration mixing between the different subzones. This shared history leads to similar adaptations being useful between unrelated groups of animals in the same realm. If you had also noticed that animals tend to look similar in the same area, then I'm happy to offer both a confirmation and an explanation. If you had not had that theory though, be grateful that you got to learn the broader, more helpful theory first. Thanks for taking the time to learn about animals. There is so much more out there to learn. You can watch another video on this channel, and you can subscribe to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for stopping by this week to learn what makes life awesome.